the look of your offense change when you guys are dropping threes early in a game? Well, I think it opens everything up for us. You know, um, I thought, you know, just showing film today, we had three times where they made a basket. We came down and scored in six seconds or less. You know, we didn't hang our head. We pushed the basketball. We pushed the tempo. And that's what we need. When we're playing with pace. We're going to get open shots like that. So when we're making threes early. It really opens up the paint drives for us. You've been trying to get him involved all, all playoffs. And I think he was three of ten or something last night. But he hit a couple threes. Like, you won't know until he plays again. But, but – could that be, you know, the start of something for him? You know, and um, we got confidence in JC that he can score the basketball. You know, he was second in the league in scoring off the bench. And, um, you know, in the playoffs, they try to take away what you do best. So um, he's figured that out. And, you know, he's going to get shots and just got to make them. And we know he can make shots. So seeing a couple go down last night was good for him. A couple times about telling him to be more aggressive, be himself, that kind of thing. Have you had to deal with nerves for him? No, I don't think he's nervous. Um, he's not scared and afraid of, at all. You know, um, if you take 11, 12 shots off the bench in the playoffs, you're not scared, you're not afraid. So um, that's what he does. And, you know, we just got to be smart, you know, time and score, you know, when to do it. But he's doing a good job just trying to be aggressive attacking. And um, I think he will make shots. If, right, what, if, if he got right, what would that mean for you? Scoring off the bench um, with him and Kyle, you know, um, I think Jeff, you know, it's ball handling, orchestrating the offense, and I think it means a lot. If he's scoring the basketball off the bench with Kyle, um, it gives us another dimension we can go to. Hey, Ty, the Celtics' struggles on the road in the playoffs have been pretty well documented. You, you played on the road in the playoffs. You've coached on the road in the playoffs. How different is it? I liked it when I played. I like being on the road, you know. Um, but it's a different atmosphere. I think, you know, at home you can make mistakes and still overcome them. But when you're on the road, you can't make as many mistakes and overcome the mistakes you make. So, you know, playing at home and you have a great fan base, great crowd, um, it's easier for the crowd to get behind you and give you that extra energy and boost like they gave us last night. So, How much tougher do you think it would be for a young team that just hasn't experienced that? Um, it could be tough. You know, it could be tough not being in those situations a lot and um, coming to our arena where, you know, the queue was rocking last night. The fans was into it. And um, it could be a tough environment to play in. You have a big, huge win like you did last night, 30 points, whatever it was. How much do you have to spend today and tomorrow reminding your guys that they're still down? Um, not down. Just remind them that this is the way we have to play. I think um, bringing a physicality to start, G Hill picking up full court, got a little deflection in the backcourt, picking up, making Rozier turn. I thought JR's first possession of the game, not letting Tatum catch it easily, and they had to go to a second option. So just, you know, remind those guys that you're bringing the physicality one through five, picking up full court, being on bodies. And the biggest thing is the multiple effort, making a second effort. And we made some mistakes defensively, but we covered for one another last night. We really continue to keep moving. And I thought last night was LeBron's best game I've seen in a long time as far as helping, closing out to Jalen Brown's chest, making him put it on the floor, closing out to Morris, closing out to Smart. So he did a really good job of just setting the tone of multiple efforts. So it was good for us. Did you change his defensive responsibility or how you used him defensively? Um, no. Um, I just thought he did a lot better, you know, helping and then getting back out, you know, getting to Smart, getting to um, – Jalen Brown getting to Morris, and he really did a good job. And he had a few block shots at the rim, being low man on our defense. So he was really active last night defensively. These numbers can be deceiving, but last night was LeBron's lowest usage percentage of the three games against the Celtics. Did you make a concerted effort to put the ball in George's hands more, allowing him to be aggressive? Well, we put in um, a few new sets last night. Um, they gave us more movement. Um, you know, Bron, he, he doesn't want to move too much, so we had to make JR and G. Hill do all the moving, and Bron just hold the ball. But G. Hill did a good job of just pushing the pace. I thought he did a tremendous job of getting downhill, um, playing fast, in the drags, double drags, our flow offense. And when he's attacking the paint and being aggressive early, him and JR, when they're scoring, it really opens everything up. Getting back to Joe's question, um, Tristan said last night that you guys brought a must win mentality to, to game three. Can you do anything to keep that going for 48 hours? You know, for a game? We know what it takes. You know, we've been here before. Um, we got a lot of veterans, a veteran crew, and uh, they know what it takes to win. And so we just can't get satisfied with this one win. It was just one. We got to come out, you know, tomorrow night and duplicate it again. Um, with what we were talking about with Jordan, the same things with Larry. Um, 
did he have to feel his way to get to, to, to kind of get in the flow? He seems like he's been playing better lately. I mean, his energy, his athleticism, his ability to switch and guard multiple positions is good for us. And when he's rolling to the basket, you know, he got a couple dunks last night. And when they pull in the help, now you got Kyle Corver and Jr. making threes. So um, his athletic ability and um, his force rolling to the rim is really key for us. Sound obvious or seem obvious because I mean he's been in the dunk contest and he's got such jumping ability. But have you ever had to stress to him that he has to dunk the ball in traffic? No, <laughs> just you know make the right play. You know I think when he's around the basket he's going to try to dunk it. So I mean it's not something I think I have to tell him. The way that LeBron has gotten Nance the ball, do you think they have that? It's the athleticism that they're able to you know sort of make some good connections. I think Larry does a great job of just when plays break down or sprinting into pick and rolls. So his man, his man's not on his body. So he gets there quick. He touch and go, and now he's open. So I think he does a good job just sprinting into pick and rolls and creating that separation where he can get lobs and dunks and easy drop offs. I was saying last night you guys were really connected, and he was talking about defensively. But when you have a game where you have six guys in double figures, what does that do to a team's chemistry? Um, it's great. I mean, it's big for us. I think when we're playing defense the way we played played last night, and we're getting out in open court, you know, everybody's going to touch it. Guys are going to get easy shots, and you know, we can get four, five, six guys in double figures when we're playing that way. Ty, did you feel that the offense came easier last night? And how much of it was a byproduct of the defense? Um, a lot has to do with our defense, but I thought we made quick decisions yesterday. I didn't think we held the ball as much. I thought, you know, either we had shot, drive, or get to the second side, and we did that a lot, you know, in last night's game. It was the big emphasis going into the game, and um, the guys really did it. When you see Jr. make a three in the first quarter, I think it might have been his first one. Do you say to yourself, you know, that's a good thing? No, I mean. JR can miss six, seven in a row. He can come back and make seven in a row. So we understand that. Um, the biggest thing is just JR taking his shots. And when he's making shots and threes, we're a totally different team. Did, I just want to ask you about <laughs> Ryan Shazier. Was that a, kind of a cool experience for you to see him after the game? Yeah, it was. Um, my first time getting a chance to meet him. And um, just good to see him be able to get up and get around and get about. And. Um, you know, the Pittsburgh organization did a great job of just, you know, paying him all of his money, um, a class act. So it's just good to see him out. And I told him anything he needs, any game he wants to come to, um, we have his back. So it was good to see him. Yes, man. What, what did you take from your time in Boston that applies now as a head coach? Um, all the stuff I learned from Doc Rivers. Yeah. I think um, just having a chance and opportunity to, to be under a coach who I think is one of the top coaches in the NBA and to learn what he's done. Um, how he's handled, you know, coaching KG, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, Rondo, and um, just seeing how he did it. So, you know, everything I do, you know, coaching-wise, you know, Doc Rivers driven. So, um, with the opportunity that he gave me, along with Danny Ainge, of just, you know, making up a role for me to come there to, you know, get my feet wet to become a coach, you know, I owe a lot to that organization giving me my first opportunity. All right. Thanks, Coach.